Hi everyone, and welcome to the second of three videos on pneumonia. We're going to be talking about the pathophysiology of pneumonia today. My name is Eric and I'm going to be your teacher today. So let's get started. To understand the pathophysiology behind pneumonia, we first need to have a good understanding of the anatomy in the respiratory system. So to start off, let's look at the upper respiratory tract. In the upper respiratory tract, air starts off going in through your mouth and your nose. Inside of your nose, though, we've got a couple of mechanisms that start cleaning out the air that you breathe in. Starting off, we have the nasal turbinate. So air goes in through your nostrils, and it's filtered through these turbinates, these tunnels, that filter the air along with the hair that is inside of your nostrils. As we continue down, air starts to approach the trachea. So the trachea is right here, and it moves right alongside the esophagus, which goes down to your stomach. Your trachea, though, goes down to your lungs. Now, right at this junction, your esophagus and trachea separate, and we don't want food to be going down into your lungs. That's for the esophagus to handle. So to prevent that, we have the epiglottis, and the epiglottis prevents you from swallowing anything that would go into your lungs. It covers up your trachea whenever you swallow to protect you from aspirating something. Now, like a piece of chocolate. Within these systems here, within the trachea, we also have something called the mucociliary elevator. The mucociliary elevator is a process that combines mucin and cilia. Mucin is a secretion that is kind of antibacterial, it traps bacteria, it traps any forms of particles, it's kind of like a mucus in a fashion. It's a thick goo, if nothing else and it traps foreign particles. These foreign particles are then trapped inside the mucin, and cilia are like little tiny, 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 tiny wings along your trachea that beat their wings upwards. And they beat these wings upwards all the way up to the esophagus. They go past the epiglottis so that you can swallow it instead of having it fall down into your lungs. So the mucociliary elevator is something that beats mucin, that traps foreign particles up the trachea to your esophagus so that you can either cough it up or have it swallowed down into your stomach. Moving on, we're going into the lower respiratory tract. So as before, we have our trachea right here. Then we have our bronchi moving into the bronchioles and then the alveoli. So you have your trachea, your bronchi, these separate into the bronchioles, and the bronchioles start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. They separate more and more, and they start to form these little grape seed like capsules of alveoli. The mucociliary elevator is still active inside the bronchioles, bronchi, and trachea. And just let's not forget that this is a lung. And let's not forget that pneumonia is a lung infection. So ultimately, pneumonia is an infection of the lower respiratory tract. If someone says that they have an upper respiratory tract infection, it is not pneumonia. Let's be very clear about that. Now, once you get to your alveoli, there's a few things we need to know. First, gas exchange happens here. This is where the magic happens. Next, it's a relatively dry environment. You don't get cilia, you don't get mucin in this area. You have a little bit of fluid that helps in the surface tension of the alveoli, but ultimately this is a dry environment so that we can have gas exchange occurring. Cilia and mucin are only going to be occurring above these systems. So what that means is, whereas before, if you had some foreign particles in your lungs, you had the cilia beating them upwards, and you had the mucin that was trapping it and being pushed upwards. We don't have that defensive mechanism here. So let's quickly review. We've got our upper respiratory tract, starting off with the nasal turbinates, going past the epiglottis into your trachea, and the mucociliary elevator that traps foreign particles, and the cilia that moves that mucin, that trapped particle fluid, up 
through your trachea to your epiglottis where you either cough it up or you swallow it back down. Then going down through the trachea, we have our bronchi, which separate into bronchioles, which separate more and more until we form alveoli, where gas exchange happens. It's a relatively dry environment, and the mucociliary elevator does not exist at the level of the alveoli, but it does at the bronchioles and the bronchi and above. And once again, pneumonia is a lung infection. Lungs are part of the lower respiratory tract, and so pneumonia is a lower respiratory tract infection. Now, that being said, if you get an upper respiratory tract infection, you can predispose yourself to getting a lower respiratory tract infection. So let's say that you get the flu. And with the flu, we have a couple of issues. Well, first, the cilia and mucin in your trachea and in your upper respiratory tract get damaged. The cells and tissues get damaged and the production of mucin and the action of cilia aren't working as well. On top of that, because they're not working as well, those foreign particles, and let's say it's bacterial particles, start to move past your epiglottis. It's no longer being moved upwards. They move past your epiglottis, past your bronchi, past your lungs, past your bronchioles, and deposit themselves on the alveoli. And so as a result of that, of that bacterial infection, because your upper respiratory tract infection, you get inflammation in your lower respiratory tract area and this is the starting point of pneumonia this is the starting point of the pathology behind pneumonia so what is inflammation inflammation at the outsides of the alveoli is a response to a foreign body and it's a normal response your blood vessels dilate they send out chemical mediators to tell the rest of your body that they need assistance, that they need immune body cells to fight for them, and it results in increased blood flow and the recruitment of those host defenses. In addition, it dilutes and destroys foreign bodies between these two mechanisms. By increasing the blood flow and the host defenses, we dilute and we destroy. As a result of this process, though, we start to get an accumulation of fluid, not only from the increased blood flow, but also from the byproducts of the destruction of cells. And so we start getting something called edema, the buildup of fluid and edema inside the alveoli and inside your lungs. As a result of that, you might guess, you get a cough. Your body detects that there's fluid buildup. Eventually, as it builds up and it reaches the level of the bronchioles and the bronchi, it beats that fluid higher up into the junction of your trachea and your bronchi and that's where your cough reflex is activated and so when we have pneumonia and we have the buildup of anemia that's what edema is part of me the buildup of edema that's why we have that cough on top of this the process of inflammation also triggers fever fever happens because it improves the response action and the abilities of our own host defenses and host cells to fight off foreign bodies. So this is the main idea of the pathology behind pneumonia. As a result of the normal process of inflammation at the levels of the alveoli, we get a buildup of fluid and edema. This buildup of fluid inhibits the exchange of gases. This buildup of fluid also then leads to a cough. And in addition to the inflammation that leads to the edema, their normal response to this infection is a fever. And we like fever. Fever is generally good unless it gets too high because a fever helps our own host defenses fight off foreign invaders. It's important to realize that inflammation is a normal process, but in this situation, it results in a serious complication of pneumonia. So let's move back a little bit. We've gone over a lot of stuff here. So we're going to just review all of it very quickly so that it's still fresh in your mind by the end of the video. Okay, so our keynote summary. Air is filtered through the nasal turbinates, the epiglottis, then goes into the trachea where it goes into the lungs, which are composed of your bronchi, your bronchioles, and your alveoli. Pneumonia is a lung infection, so it's a lower respiratory tract infection at the site of the alveoli. 
The mucociliary elevator is a core process to preventing infection. Mucin traps foreign particles, and cilia move those particles up the respiratory tract until they are either coughed up or swallowed into the stomach. Infection results in inflammation and fever, and those are both normal immune responses. However, the inflammation that occurs and the cellular battlefield as a result of the body's reactions result in fluid buildup, so edema and pus. That fluid builds up and the damage to the alveoli from the infection and the immune responses combined inhibit airflow and gas exchange. So you have the building up of fluid which acts as a physical barrier and then you have the alveolar damage, which is a physiological barrier to the exchange of air. And ultimately, this can result in respiratory failure and then death. So these are the main minimum ideas of what pneumonia is pathologically. You get a lung infection, you then get inflammation. The process of inflammation leads to a buildup of fluid and then that buildup of fluid combined with the damage from the infection inhibits the exchange of air. So hopefully this was clear and concise for you. This should give you a good understanding of what the pathophysiology behind pneumonia is. If you have any questions, concerns, or queries, comments, please put them in the comment section below. And I hope that you're having a great day. Cheers.